Hello. This lesson will talk about uh, model construction, refraction model construction, using delay times and refractor velocities that were derived in uh, the previous lesson on refraction analysis. So at this point, we assume we have delay times. The delay times, uh, we can see those delay times. Let's say, for example, in the pick window, we can display uh, delay times over here on the map. So you can see we have delay times that range from about 65 milliseconds, and then there's one or two that are actually pretty small. Um, if you want to see want to see the outliers, we can uh, look at look for them like like so. Click on them, and you can see there's a geometry problem here, but we're not going to worry about that right now. Anyway, let's and I'm going to bring those colors back. So to uh, to construct a model. We will uh, go into the model building window under delay time. So we're going to delay times, model building window. And <clears throat> the window starts off and it just shows us our elevations uh, for the surface. And what we want to do now is we want to modify this model because uh, it doesn't contain the information we need yet. All we have is refra the, the surface elevations. So we're going to specify a weathering velocity. And this will allow. Once we give it a weathering velocity, it will allow the, um, the program to take the delay times and refractor velocities and the surface elevations and can actually construct a refractor in space. So we will construct refractor elevation model once we give it the missing information, which is weathering velocity. Now, as you can see, the, um, and th there's a brief description of this. So Right now, I'm going to give it a, a velocity. I'm going to say the weathering velocity is about 25, uh, 3,000, which is roughly half of the refractor velocity. And this is one of those rules of thumb that some places, most places, kind of make sense. But um, some places, you, you, you should know the, um, some idea of the weathering velocity. For example, sand dunes, uh, typically I use about 850, 860 uh, meters per second, say. Uh, for sand dunes, and no matter what the refractor velocity is, sand typically has a velocity of about 860 meters per second. So, uh, loose sand that is, like the kind you find in most dunes. So, I'm going to use 3,000, which is about 1,000 meters per second, um, a little less, and I'm going to set it to a constant, and I'm going to say OK. And the program says, do you want, will you allow me to, will you allow the program to, ref to modify the refractor elevations? Yes, indeed. That's exactly what we want. So uh, do nothing is rather dangerous because now you have a model that's just really not consistent internally. But by following this recommendation, which of course is a default, we get an internally consistent model. Finish. So now we can look at the model, the uh, delay time zero, which is a constant 3000. Okay. So it's one color. And then we're going to uh, look at the refractor velocity, which is what we computed from our analysis. And then we're going to look at refractor elevations, the delay time elevation one. And you can see it's um, sea level is right in here. So, um, so for the most part, the, model, the refractor is somewhat below sea level. Uh, the elevation is somewhat below sea level, no problem. Because the surface elevation is only about 100 feet, so we're, we're talking about a refractor that's not all that thick. And um, now what I'm going to do is, um, and this is something uh, that's not the, it's beyond the scope of this, but we recommend re smoothing the refractor because we believe most of the issues in first break, um, most of the surface consistent deviations in first breaks are due to the weathering velocity, not to the refractor shape itself. So we're going to smooth the refractor shape, and then we're going to use the delay time equation and to modify the weathering velocity, which, as you know, is what was constant. At th is right at this point, is consistently 3,000. But when I smooth the refractor, you'll see that we actually will change that weathering velocity to be plus or minus 3,000, but it's going to add a lot of uh, shape around it. So I'm going to modify the model again, and I'm going to have the refractor elevation as, a, as the guy that's going to be modified. I'm going to smooth it, and I'm going to smooth it by about 3,000 feet. And then I'm going to, um, again, allow the program to modify it so we stay consistent, and we'll say finish. So now the refractor is smooth. And if I go back and look at the weathering velocity, however, you will see that it has now has lots of shape. But here's, here's 3,000 here. And you can see most of the colors are pretty much 
about one, uh, 200 feet per second plus or minus, and there's one or two outliers. This guy here is, a, is something of an outlier because his late time was so small. But as we saw, that's a geometry problem, which we should have fixed anyway. So anyway, at this point, so we have a model. So let's look at it in profile. We actually have a way of looking at the model in profile, and that's the model profile display window, as the name implies. So here, all I have to do is click and drag and I see the model here. And you can see the weathering velocity changing. Uh, here's the refractor velocity. I mean, yeah, here's the, ref here's the refractor itself. Surface elevations, refractor elevations, which are now smooth. And the red velocity here, which is roughly about 6,000. Okay, and now if I'm gonna look at another one, let's say we had a stream running like up, up down here. I, over here on this map, I, let's say I had a stream here. I could actually take a line right down that stream bed and like so. So we're not subject to the orientation of the grid, the lines, shot receiver lines, whatever. And then let's look at another one over here. Let's go across this way. And as you can see, we can um, change things. Like for example, if I wanted to plot four, I could do a fourth. And it requires that I go through the cycle again. But uh, there's a third and let's, whoops, let's say like this. Anyway, you can do it in any arbitrary direction you want. And the colors of this axis here coincide with, with the uh, colors of these lines on here. Um, there's other options here. We're not going to go into those. But anyway, that's how we construct the model. And that's the end of this lecture or lesson. Thank you very much.